Hi, I'm Mevan Indru. Uh, so I will, I'm from Sri Lanka and I'm a final year undergraduate. And uh, I will be also the other host for today's event. Over to you, Shifa. Yes. Uh, so we are uh, the host for this uh, event. And on behalf of the ICM and the national organization of the different countries like the Pakistan, Nepal, Afghanistan, India, we are really thankful for your uh, webinar and really appreciate being thankful to all the participants who have also joined us from uh, Southeast Asia and Okay, um, let me just uh, speak on behalf of Shifa. Shifa's voice is not clear. For those of you who have come, welcome. Dr. Shifa is actually our host, but I think they must be having an internet issue over there. So I'm going to speak on her behalf. Um, uh, Maven, you want to go ahead? Yes, uh, yeah. Even I, actually, I couldn't hear what Shifa said uh, on, up to this point. So let me just continue from hopefully where she finished. Uh, which would be regarding the participants. So regarding today's uh, webinar, we will be covering two topics today. The first one is uh, learning to learn well. And the second one is managing your time wisely. So let's begin with a word of prayer. And uh, so therefore, I would like to invite uh, one of the uh, ICMDA members. Uh, so I would like to kindly invite Dr. Matthew Santosh to lead us in this session of prayer before we begin. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to listen, learn, and reflect together. And as we spend this time together, listening to Rebecca and Iram, we pray that it will not be they who speak, but you who will be speaking through them. The challenge is to look at our own lives, uh, how uh, uh, our lives of stewardship in um, both in terms of time and uh, our uh, uh, ability to learn and reflect. So can we commit in the next 40, 45 minutes or one hour into your hands and pray that Lord will continue to speak to each one of us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Th uh, thank you Dr. Matthew Santosh for leading us in that session of prayer. So our, to uh, our program today begins with a short talk on learning to learn well. So following the talk, we will have 10 minutes of Q&A or questions and answers. And uh, as you are listening to the talk, please write any questions you may have for the speaker on the chat. Uh, in case you wish uh, not to be identified as uh, the one asking the questions, you may write the question uh, in the chat uh, directly or privately to either me or Dr. Anit. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to our speaker for the topic, learning to learn well. So uh, Dr. Rebecca Zacharias hails from India. She's a trained physician, geriatrician, and has specialized in education. She heads the distance education unit of CMC Bellor. And uh, without uh, taking much more time, I would like to invite Dr. Rebecca Zacharias to take over the session. Uh, over to you, Dr. Rebecca. Thank you so much, Maven. Can I just confirm that you can hear me well? Uh, yes, we can hear before, you. Love before it. we talk about how to learn well, we have to make sure that we can hear each other well. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is such a joy and a privilege for me to join all of you um, for this uh, session. Uh, when Dr. Santosh asked me uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, it actually uh, helped me to go back and review something that I had spent a little time researching about four or five years ago, and it was just really nice to kind of look back. And I think it's uh, not only for those of you who are students here, but I think for all of us, uh, uh, learning is something that we believe is a lifetime process. And so I hope that the Lord will enable all of us to take something back uh, from uh, both the talks today. Um, so, uh, yes, as, as uh, Maven mentioned, I work in um, CMC Vellore in the distance education department. Um, and a large part of what we do is enabling healthcare professionals across the country and now even the world 
to actually uh, hone skills so that uh, we can all uh, be lifetime learners and we can uh, offer better care to our patients. And ultimately, that's really the goal for each one of us, right? So let me just go ahead and screen share and um, we'll look at a, a short presentation together. Maven, could you confirm if you can see my screen? Uh, yes, we can see you. All right. Screen. Thank you. Um, so I have uh, basically divided uh, this talk into a couple of uh, bullet points. And over the next 20 minutes, uh, these are the few things that we are going to unravel together. Before we even talk about, you know, how do we learn well? We actually have to ask the question, what, what is learning really all about? Um, what hinders my learning? And how can I overcome any challenges or barriers in the learning process? I think if all of us found learning to be a very easy process, then we wouldn't be sitting together in this Zoom room uh, having this conversation. But clearly, we all are looking for ways in which we can improve our learning process. Is there a difference between learning versus an education? And then we look at uh, some examples. So those are the, the things that we're going to look at together today. Um, I love definitions. You know, whatever it is that we talk about, I always like to go back to the basic and kind of look at some definitions of a word, even if it's a really simple word. So um, when I was looking at this topic, I said, before we actually think about how do we learn well, do I know what it means to learn? Um, so I actually looked up uh, a dictionary definition of what learning is. Um, and here's what uh, one of the definitions was. It says that learning is the process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, skills, behaviors, values, attitudes, and preferences. Now that list can look a little bit different depending on where we search or what our source is. But I think the word that I want to highlight in this definition is that word called process, which you see in yellow. Um, we all need to understand that learning is something that does not happen overnight. There is no shortcut methods. Although many of us, uh, when we were in school and college have probably tried very hard to learn, quote unquote learn things in a very short span of time before a test or an exam. But true learning is a process. And so if it is a process and through that process, like this definition says, we acquire or we gain new understanding. And that might be in the form of new knowledge, maybe some new skill that I need to learn in order to help me either in my personal life or in my professional life, uh, you know, and more important than the knowledge or skills, it's really looking at values, ethics, behaviors, because these things are often not taught. And all of this combined together is what really provides um, what I would call as a whole person education, looking at all the dimensions of the process of learning. So obviously if there is a process then there are a couple of steps or a couple of components that any process has, right? If I tell you, you know, find a recipe, you won't find a recipe that just lists ingredients. You'll also find steps on how to make it. And so that is the process. So in, a, in the process of learning, there are four things that are really, really important. One is time. And time again has several components. We are going to hear in the next half of our uh, our uh, talk today from Dr. Iram about how to, how to manage your time well, and I'm really looking forward to that as well. But time is a huge component of the learning process. How much time I give, how little time I give to my learning, and how well do I use that time, whether it's little or much. So that is one component that's really important in the process of learning. Second is I need to have a plan. You know, Without a plan, I'm going to spend some time and still come out of it saying, what did I actually learn? You know, or did I just spend 15, 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour sitting with my books or in front of my computer, but at the end of it, I feel like I haven't really gained much. So we need to have a plan and we'll talk about that a little bit more. The third thing is a commitment to learn. You know, as we uh, become adult learners, you know, when we were in school, when we started off, um, we didn't have much of a choice, right? We went to school because that was the thing to do as a child. 
but at that point, we don't really uh, look at a child and say, okay, how committed are they? We kind of look at children and say, how can we nurture an environment where they can actually start well in school and then continue to be lifelong learners? But as we become adult learners, so much else, life gets in the way. And sometimes the commitment to actually learning can become smaller and smaller. So there needs to be a commitment towards learning, whatever it might be, whatever it is that we want to learn. And finally, there needs to be a consistency in our process of learning because without consistency, if I do it well once, I do it well this month, or I do it well just before the exam, but the rest of the year, you know, the, the learning process is something that's not a priority, then that's also going to make it hard. So time, plan, commitment, consistency, uh, really have to fit in well, like a jigsaw puzzle that you see in the picture, in order for this process of learning to be beneficial. All right, now, how do we learn? I'm not here, I'm not an expert in this field and I'm not here to give you, you know, uh, the, the best formula ever, but I'm here to kind of tell you a little bit about what I have learned in the process of learning well, and hopefully some things will help us. And Sometimes when we think about that, it's always good to have a little bit of theory in the background. So I hopefully won't bore you with this, but it is important for us to know how our brain works. And I think as people in healthcare field, we would be interested to know. So there is um, two ways that we actually think, all of us, okay, every one of us. And this is called focus thinking versus diffuse thinking. Now, if you go back after today's talk and Google this, you will find several articles, you will find a lot out there. Um, but I want to just try and summarize it very, very briefly. What is the difference between focus thinking and diffuse thinking? And these two pictures kind of help us to understand it, but really not fully. Um, the first picture that you see on the left side of the screen is actually a slot machine. Now, I don't know how many of you go to arcades and play video games or you've done that, but if you go to one of these arcades and put some coins in the slot machine and play, there's a certain path that your gaming will take, you know? And so it, it might or might not reach the target, but there is a focus path that it takes. Sometimes in our learning process, it has to be a focused thinking, especially when we're looking to acquire a new skill or learn a new concept. Uh, and that is something that, you know, God in his, uh, in his uh, wisdom has created our brain and our whole body in such a way that the brain can actually switch back and forth between this process of when to think in a focused manner and when to think more diffusely. So focused thinking comes into play when our brain is trying to actually acquire some new knowledge, a new skill. And it is, like the word explained, it is focused. It takes a certain trajectory or at least tries to take a certain trajectory or a certain path. Now diffuse thinking on the other hand is just letting our mind wander. And you might wonder how's that going to help with learning? You know, I'm not supposed to be doing that. You know, I've been told not to daydream, but there is actually such a beautiful way that our brain expands and thinks, you know, when you hear people saying, you know, think about the big picture or dream about what you want to see in the next 10 years. You know, where do you see yourself in your career in the next 10 years or so? Actually, what our brain is doing at that time is not focused thinking, but diffuse thinking. And that also is actually a very, very helpful process in learning. One example or uh, an analogy that I came across to help us understand these two, which I thought was really cool. I wish I had a picture, but you can imagine it in your, in your own minds is, um, thinking about the way water flows. If you took, uh, you know, a jet, a, a thin, narrow jet, uh, let's say a, a water hose, and you plugged the end of it and you allowed it, it would kind of go uh, in a very uh, kind of a sharp way, a very small jet of water, and it would kind of go and hit only a certain part of your lawn or whatever it is that you're trying to water. That is similar to are focused thinking. But if you've seen uh, in some places, especially in the Western world, they have something called sprinklers in the lawn. And when they turn the sprinkler on, the water kind of just goes all over the place. Right? The whole lawn gets water. That is diffuse thinking. And what studies have actually shown is that we need a balance of both. 
we can't be focused thinking all the time. We can't also be diffuse thinking all the time. But if we actually allow our minds to switch back and forth between focused thinking and diffuse thinking, our learning is far more enriched. Uh, so you may learn a new concept, but then you can think about, okay, how am I going to use this in my practice? Or how am I going to apply this? Or you know, when I become a professor, how am I going to teach this? So you're actually switching between focused thinking and diffuse thinking. So that's just a little bit of theory. This, uh, this picture, actually, I should have put it up as I was talking, but explains the same thing. So we'll just skip that. The second thing that we need to understand in our learning process is that not all of us learn the same way. You know, just take a minute for yourself and think about when I was in school, how did I learn best? If I had time, I would have asked all of you to type in the chat box, but you can still go ahead and do it. I'd love to see some answers come up. But, you know, did I have a predominant way of learning? For example, when I was in school and college, however boring or interesting the lecture was, if I had to let, learn anything out of it, as my professor was talking, I had to write some notes. Without that, my mind would not really focus on the lecture. So I would keep scribbling something. Whether or not I looked at it later is a different question. But that was my way of learning, that I needed to write something down. Um, Dr. Santosh says, by drawing pictures. Anita says, by visualizing it in my head. Excellent, very good. So keep those answers coming. I think that will um, help us. But we all have uh, different, uh, different styles of uh, learning. Um, so I want to introduce you to one particular questionnaire. Some of you might have already uh, heard about this and were familiar. Uh, for some of you, it may be new. But uh, there are uh, studies that have described four predominant ways that we learn, as you can see on the slide over here. Okay, And this is otherwise in, in an abbreviation known as the VARC learning styles, V-A-R-K. V stands for visual learners. So those who actually need to draw pictures, like Dr. Santosh was just saying, uh, you know, um, those who are, uh, you know, much more engaged with their learning if they see pictures or they're able to watch a video or look at some diagrams, uh, the learning is greatly reinforced for them. The other is our auditory learners. You know, those who learn, actually, they are the people who can sit in a lecture for 45 minutes and listen to the professor and it, they'll get the best out of it. Or maybe listen to podcasts or audiobooks. Uh, and uh, they love to learn that way. Then we've got your third st uh, uh, style, which is the read-write learner. Somebody like me, when I had to scribble notes all the time, you know, as I was a read-write learner, I think. And then finally, uh, those who actually have to do the skill or do it with their hands, uh, who are known as kinesthetic learners. So V, A, R, and K, the visual, the auditory, the read-write, and the kinesthetic learners. Now, if you actually, when you have some time and you're free, Google the VARC questionnaire, you have a very nice questionnaire that will pop up with about 20 or 25 questions, which you can answer for yourself and see what is your own predominant learning style. Now, one thing I do want to mention here is, if you figure out a predominant learning style, it does not mean that you don't learn the other ways. Uh, it is just that that is your predominant style. Uh, but it doesn't mean that if I'm a read-write learner that I'll never listen to a lecture or uh, you know, watch a video and learn something out of it. So try this for yourself when you have time. But it is important to understand this because if I know what is my predominant learning style, then I can actually use that to gain the best from my learning process. All right, what hinders my learning? Here, I have to have some answers from all of you before I move my slide. Type in the chat box for me or feel free to unmute if you can and tell me, what do you think are some things that hinders your learning? We all want to learn. Uh, that's why we are here together. But what are some things that come in the way, some barriers or challenges or hindrances uh, in the learning process? I'll keep monitoring the chat box, so you are welcome to even unmute and speak. Let's get some answers. All of you are such excellent learners that there's, oh, there, there, okay. I was going to say, nobody has any hindrances. Procrastination, we'll do it later. Social media distractions, absolutely. Distractions like mobile phones, uh, not much motivation, other things on my mind. Um, not curious, not interested, all right. Mobile notification, 
questions? That's a big one. Games, okay. Thank you for being so honest with all your answers. Um, I saw a couple more. Difficulty in understanding a concept prevents the next stage. Absolutely. Thank you for that. We'll talk a little bit about that. Lazy. Yeah, some days we all feel like that, don't we? Uh, something, uh, it has to be something interesting and new. Poor time ma management, hard to be consistent. Movies and YouTube shorts. That's the latest, I think, reels and shorts. You think it's so short, it's only 30 seconds, but you can spend several, several, maybe even hours watching reel after reel. Right? That's like a new thing that's been added into social media, not able to focus. Thank you so much. Now the list goes on. And most of what I'm going to put on this slide is things that you've, you probably actually know. But I want to look at three main things, okay, in three blocks. The first one, like you all mentioned, procrastination, a big word for just saying, I'll do it later. Okay, The discomfort when I start thinking of something and therefore I say, I'll do it later. You know, I'll just watch one more episode on Netflix and then I'll do this later, right? And uh, in in just a couple of minutes, I want to help us with a little tool that may help us with the procrastination, okay? So that's one. Sleep. I didn't see anyone mention it so far, but if we are not adequately rested, we've not got enough sleep, it is a huge barrier. Because look what sleep does. Sleep removes the metabolic toxins from the brain. So there are studies that have said that even a 20 minute nap helps us to actually wake up feeling a little more refreshed and our brain thinks and works better and it deepens and strengthens the neural patterns, all right? And then you use the word distraction several times in the chat box, but these were the things that I could think of. I'm sure there are many more. Hunger, stress, pain, and the pain might be physical, emotional, you know, anything, um, friends, family, the location of where I pick to study, my phone, social media, which I've actually put in capital letters, right? The, and, and all of you have covered uh, a lot of this as well. Um, obviously, we can't go into each one of them, but a couple of things that we can think about how we can overcome our, some of our learning challenges. And here are a few practical tips that I just want to leave with you. Now, the first one, which... Um, I will uh, admit that I have not consistently tried it for myself. I have sometimes, but those there are people who use this regularly and say that it's a very useful tool. Um, basically, the idea of having timed sessions in your learning process. And it was actually described by a person who was an Italian, I forget his name now. And he actually took a kitchen timer, which was shaped like a tomato. And the word for tomato in Italian is pomodoro. And so then it became called the Pomodoro tool. And today, if you, go, if you go to Amazon or somewhere and look, you can buy a Pomodoro tool. But essentially, all you need is a timer. And a timer can be on your phone. It can be a kitchen timer. It can be, you know, uh, you set it on the microwave for 20 minutes and it can go off. It doesn't matter. But essentially, the idea behind this is that you have short timed uh, sessions of learning where you can really focus. So what the Pomodoro tool tells you to actually do is to uh, set a timer for 25 minutes and really focus that 25 minutes on your learning. And then basically you get away, you take a break for five to 10 minutes and then come back again after a five or a 10 minute break, do what you want in that five to 10 minutes, come back again, set your timer again for another 25 minutes, do your learning process, whatever it is that you're studying or learning, another five to 10 minutes. And after you do four such blocks of time sessions, you give yourself a longer break, probably about 45 minutes or so. And it, it, the studies have shown that actually the brain processes the learning material much better when it is done in this way. Now, like I said, I've only tried it a couple of times, so I cannot say it absolutely works, but try it for yourself. If this is a tool that helps you, then this might actually make you use your time in a much better way. Because sometimes, uh, like one of you mentioned, I think you might sit there in front of the book or the computer for hours together and feel like I didn't get much. So this is something called the Pomodoro tool, basically time session. Chunk your material. So remember the process had a plan. Make a plan as to this today or in this week, how am I going to chunk my material so that I cover this much ground, you know, in this week or, or today. Make notes or use any other aids that will help your learning work in a space where you can minimize the other distractions you talked about. 
put your phone away. You know, even if that means silencing it, leaving it in another room for that, you know, one hour or that 25 minutes. Deal with hunger. Oops, sorry about that. Not meant to switch so quickly yet. You know, don't try to study or learn on an empty stomach. Uh, you'll only be thinking about what to eat or what to buy from the store. You know, which brand of chips I want to go and get after this. So eat something uh, and drink plenty of water. Have water with you. Because if you're dehydrated, you begin to kind of have a headache and then you lose your focus. And make sure that you are well rested. You need to have had enough sleep. Okay, so these are just some practical tips to help us with our learning process. Now, I put this up as another goal or an objective we wanted to learn. You know, is there a difference between learning and education? We sometimes tend to use these two words interchangeably. Uh, you know, what is, and we just talked about what learning is. We said it is a process. And the idea of learning is that we all want to be lifelong learners. You know, the day that we actually say that I'm done, I have learned everything I need to know in life. You know, that's the day that we actually start aging. Up until that time, we don't age. So we all want to be lifelong learners. Acquire some new skill, learn something new every day. And, um, you know, versus an education, a lot of times we think about degrees or certificates or diplomas as part of the education. You could have a whole string of those and still not be somebody who is a lifelong learner. And this, this sentence that you see here is actually from a colleague of mine uh, who's a family physician who works with us and he's from South Africa. And I learned this from Dr. Friki, who often says that the heart of education is the education of the heart. Everything really begins from why I want to do what I'm doing. So I love this verse from Proverbs 4.23, which says, above all else, guard your heart for everything that we do, think, learn, behave, flows from what's in our heart. And so... You know, if we have the best intentions in our heart, if we have the purest thoughts in our heart, then everything else flows from that. So the heart of education, the heart of being a lifelong learner is actually educating our hearts, all right? Very quickly, I know that I don't have too much time. So very quickly, just a couple of examples of some effective learners. And I have a few names up here on the screen. Uh, and I, except for the last name, you should be familiar with the other four. But Leonardo da Vinci, we all know, he was what was known as a polymath, which means he was so many careers all put together in one individual. He was a sculptor, he was an artist, he was an engineer, he was a mathematician. So he was what was known as a polymath. He was someone who actually proved that learning need not be specific to one single domain. If your mind is open, you can be a sculptor and an artist and an engineer and a mathematician and all of that in one lifetime. Okay, so that was just an effective learner. Imagine how his brain must have worked. Always wonder like how his brain must have worked. Thomas Alva Edison, you know, the one who gave us the light bulb and, you know, those kind of things. He was somebody who actually was known to do this switching between diffuse thinking and focused thinking. He was a dual mode learner. William Carey, you know, the missionary who came to India, he was a cobbler. So you can think about education. I don't know if there was much there in, the ter in terms of education, but he could speak 16 languages. He started the first printing press. Without, without that printing press today, we would not have the books and the Bibles that we have so freely available. Um, and again, he was somebody who kind of was a big picture person, but also very, very focused. So, you know, diffuse and focused thinking. Bill Gates, uh, I mean, we can talk a lot, you know, uh, thanks to Microsoft and everything else. But one of the things about Bill Gates was apparently that he never left his office, especially when the weekend was coming. After Friday's work was the weekend. He never left his office without a bag full of books that he was going to read over the weekend. That was his, his style, which is apparently to this day. So he was always reading when he was not working. And then finally, uh, this is somebody who I personally know. And actually, I have a video, but I'm not going to play it because the audio is not the greatest in that. But Jebelin is actually one of our own graduates from um, CMC Valor. She finished her MBBS about four years ago. And she was the best outgoing student. And uh, I just happened to kind of meet her at the time when she was graduating and got to know her. And I was asking her, like, what, what made you bag this award of being the best outgoing student? And some of the things that she said were so beautiful. And I'll try and see if I can share the video, which, you know, at a later time. But uh, right now, I'm going to not play it.
But some of the things she said is about how every time she sat down to study, she would invite God to sit with her and help her in the study. If she faced a challenge, she would be like, I would tell God, I'm not understanding this. Uh, sometimes there'd be days when she'd be like, I don't feel like studying. But the whole time she was actually conversing with Jesus, you know, asking him to enable her through her learning process. And I thought that was such a beautiful testimony because Jesus is available to every one of us and we can do the same as well. Uh, so I'm just going to skip that slide. Uh, sorry about that. That's how this happens. Okay. And um, just come to my final two slides I think I have. Uh, we, as those who know and love the Lord, have the best role model in, in Jesus. He was the master teacher. And he actually taught us how to learn. He actually taught us how to teach. And he taught us how to learn well. And I just want to put up a couple of examples up here of things that Jesus did, which demonstrates how fun learning can actually be. You know, uh, surprise learning activity by just walking on the water. Imagine the faces of the disciples when they saw him walking on the water. And then all the learning that happened after that. You know, group discussion. Often he would kind of, uh, you know, uh, do this little thing of like uh, group discussions. You know, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. That's an example there. Um, pop quizzes. Somebody asked him a question. He would turn around and ask them a question. But who do you say I am? Modeling, he had a little child on his lap and said, look at this child, you know, and you have to become like this child to enter the kingdom of God. Q&A sessions, you know, uh, willing to engage in conversations with people. The list actually goes on and on, you know, interactive lectures and activity, hands-on, you know, uh, as they watched him do demonstration of a miracle of taking five loaves and two fish and just asking God to multiply it. Uh, he gave them a project and said, go out two by two to you know, Judea and Samaria and the end of the world and tell them about uh, parables, so many parables in the Bible, which we can compare to today's clinical case scenarios. Tell a story and then ask uh, questions. So there's so many different ways that learning can actually be made uh, more interesting and more fun. And finally, with that, I'm actually going to um, stop because I would love for us to have a few minutes to discuss and uh, maybe take a few questions. But I just want to end with this um, with this verse from Psalm 32, 8, which says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way I should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. And so I think for us, we have the privilege of being able to ask God our Father to enable us uh, in the learning process. As long as we also from our end make a commitment, have a plan, you know, think of that process and do it from our heart. You know, guarding our heart and do it from our heart. Um, I think that's my last slide. So I'm going to stop with that. Yes, thank you so much. And I'll hand it back uh, over to the hosts uh, if there are any questions. Thank you so much for that. Uh, since we need to move on to the next session, uh, I would like to uh, first thank uh, Dr. Rebecca for the wonderful session. And thank you for your valuable time. And uh, now I'd like to hand over uh, back to Shifa who will introduce the next speaker. So, thank, you. thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for your uh, time. And uh, uh, we are really thankful to you. Indeed, you know, learning is a lifelong journey and it's 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 very crucial uh, to develop effective learning techniques. But we are really thankful to you that uh, you have made us understand um, different learning techniques. So, uh, without any delay, uh, I hope uh, we are ready for the next session as well. And, and uh, uh, I am very happy and I'm very pleased to have Professor Dr. Eram Anjum uh, with us today as she is going to speak on uh, managing your time wisely. And uh, it will be very interesting to hear from her about the time, uh, considering uh, she is uh, the Dean of Applied and Pure Sciences and as the Chair of uh, Biotechnology Department at Kanaid College for Women, Lahore, Pakistan. Incidentally, um, under her tenure, uh, Kanaid became the first women institute uh, in Pakistan to launch a degree program in genetics. Hello. Can you guys hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you loud. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, a disclaimer. Uh, I'm not an expert in uh, time management, I would say. I've not mastered the art yet, but uh, uh, I'm a student, a scholar on the way of life, learning how to manage time. And I hope uh, I'll be able to learn something from you as well. So a very warm welcome to all of you who've joined from all over the world uh, for sharing what your insights are and for being here so that we learn together. Uh, can uh, Brother Bhaskar or somebody share the screen? Yes, next please. Yeah, so what is time? When we look at time, um, I think Dr. Rebecca made my job easy because she shared a lot of things uh, related to time management as well. And it's just preparing the base for what I'm going to share with you. So uh, time is a gift. Uh, there are some verses, if you uh, want to go through them, you can note them, or maybe we can just have one. Uh, if somebody can please read Ecclesiastes C11, if it is possible. Ecclesiastes 3.11, he has made everything beautiful in his time. Yes, so the time that he has given us, it, it's like a gift. And, you know, he it's like a beautiful thing that he gives to us at its appropriate time. Uh, Esther 4.14, if somebody, you remember the story of Esther. She was, she was brought in the palace and uh, that is the verse related to her being there. That was a gift for her, but that could be used for others. Esther 4.14, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and uh, deliverance for the Jews will arise from the other place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that uh, you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. For such a time as this. So, you know, when it is like a gift, so when God gives us a gift, so you know, she was given a gift of being there, but then she had to use it. And that brings us to the next perspective of time being the resource. Uh, if somebody can please read uh, uh, John 9, 4. It's going to be an interactive session. So I request all the participants to please chip in and please join because we are learning together. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. So as long as it is there, it means it's a, it's a resource that's been given to us. In Job 14.4, uh, it says a person's days are determined. So we have been given a certain time and we have to harness it and use it to the best of our ability. Time is also an opportunity. If somebody uh, would please read uh, Colossians 4.5. Colossians 4, 5, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Yeah, so, you know, it is uh, in Ephesians 5, 15, 16 as well. It is, it is about this opportunity. In Revelations 2, 21, God talks about that God gave uh, the time to repent, but she didn't. So it's an opportunity for repentance. It's an opportunity for working for his kingdom. It's an opportunity to serve him. And the last one, uh, uh, for for those of you who do not understand Urdu or Hindi, it's a, it's an it's a word in Urdu which says amanat, and I searched it up in um, like what would be the exact definition of uh, amanat? Uh, it's bailment, and bailment is uh, is a thing in which there is a bailer who is giving something and a bailee who is receiving something. So the bailer gives the physical possession of something to the bailee, but not the legal right. So time uh, is like given to us uh, as in bailment. God has given it to us, but we are accountable for it. Uh, would somebody like to read please uh, Romans uh, 14, 12? Anyone? So then yeah. Romans 14, 12. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. 
so uh, i used uh, i remember when i was uh, a little girl so my mother would say you know as children also we used to procrastinate and my mother would say you have to be answerable to god for every moment of your life and uh, uh, yes you know we are accountable for whatever has been given to us so this is um, time that has been given to us and if you look at matthew uh, chapter 24 verses from 14 to 30 this is the parable of the talents uh so the the master before he left gave everybody somebody five somebody two and somebody one uh and that's also like time somebody has a longer time somebody has a shorter time but this is uh just given to us in like a physical possession but we are accountable for it and we are its stewards so we have to be uh good uh stewards of it use and make use of it uh in the best of our ability next please yeah so there are two types of time kinds of time i've said time that has been given to us next please and the times we live in uh, so uh, i mean we look at it in two different perspectives uh, and i hope we will learn from it next please so first we will discuss about the time that has been given to us so uh, time as in hours uh minutes and seconds first uh, perspective is that you know we have uh 1440 minutes uh that have been given to us uh and 86400 seconds so if you imagine i felt it's a scary feeling uh how many minutes and how many seconds we just waste and we don't do anything productive or even scarier is the thought when we are doing something against the will and the kingdom of god so uh, let's be mindful of how we spend our time like when we look at it in the bigger span like i mean it's easier to to think in terms of years and months but like let's look at uh, in the smaller sphere so that we know that uh, even that is time and we have to be very conscious of how we do it the second time i feel that has been given to us is a time of work and a time of rest as much as is work important also is the the time to rest uh and i feel uh if you guys all know like all the modern gadgets these uh, smart watches and all they calculate your time of sleep and even to the point of deep sleep uh and um i have heard that in some of the torture techniques it is used that they don't let you rest or sleep so that is also very important uh, that we divide our time in times in in times of work and there is the time for rest as well the third time that has been given to us is the time of doing in a time when we are actively required to do something but a time of waiting as well and sometimes we feel this this waiting time is is not that good of an idea but just imagine like uh, i mean i was just thinking about a human pregnancy so the parents the the friends uh, and everybody has like 8 9 months for uh, preparation for the new life to come so imagine if it was like coming in a month uh, nothing is impossible with god but i think that it is uh, god's way of preparing uh, the family and sometimes uh, you know i feel that the time of waiting is more praiseworthy Uh, then the time of receiving sometimes you know we feel that oh wow we have received but there is a time when god says you know be uh, quiet and be still and wait for me and that is the best time so i think that the time given to us is actually time entrusted with us we are stewards of this every minute and second every time that we get to work and also the time of rest the time of doing and time of waiting every time is entrusted with us next slide please yeah and the next uh, type is the times we are sent in so sometimes uh, people from older generation you know, they are like you know the old days were the golden days and the economy was much better the values were much better the education system was was much better so sometimes the younger lot thinks that you know probably uh, we are sent in the wrong times uh, because the economy is worse uh, everything is so expensive the politics are bad everything is deteriorating so we feel that probably we are in the wrong times but we are not if we look back to the the uh, you can say 
the, the Esther example from 414. Uh, there's this verse, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. It is not by accident that we are born in times like this. So we are born in these times by divine plan. God has designed, God has put us in these times to make a difference, uh, to create influence, to do our part. So uh, let's not cry about it. And 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 when we are uh, born in a time as this, like, I mean, as the was elevated from a normal slave girl to to a queen so you know we could be asked to carry uh, a crown of uh, elevation of promotion uh, but we could also be asked to carry a, a crown of horns and we should be ready uh, for that as well because that is uh, whatever god's plan is next please There is a beautiful uh, saying my husband uh, actually told me about many, many uh, years ago. But uh, when I was thinking about this, the importance of hard times, uh, this is a quote by uh, Michael Hoff. And uh, it says, hard times create strong men and strong men create good times. Good times create weak men and weak men create hard times. So, I mean, uh, as much as uh, it's good to be strong men and it is good to create good times, it's also important to be careful that we don't create weaker subordinates, weaker people who follow us or weaker people who are around us. So, I mean, uh, hard times also have this blessing in them that they create the stronger version of us. Next, please. Uh, I found it really interesting. I read it, uh, uh, I think, last year that scientists uh, tried to grow some trees in a dome, uh, in a protected environment. And they thought that uh, the trees would be very, very strong and the trees would, uh, you know, thrive better than uh, the wild. But what happened was that the trees, uh, when they grew tall, they uh, started to limp. Uh, and uh, all their shoots, all their branches were facing downwards. Uh, and it was so strange. They didn't understand why this happened. Uh, but then they found out that it is the harshness, the harsh winds that was creating the tenacity, the strength in the stems and the branches that they were not, uh, uh, you know, uh, made to be in contact with. So it was uh, the the harshness, the hard times that were making the trees sturdy, the branches to be upright. And that is like, uh, I mean, I really like that the Michael Hoff's, uh, you can say his, his words have been experimentally proven. There is another beautiful uh, story, next please, of a little boy uh, who found uh, a caterpillar. Next slide, please. So he thought that he's going to keep that uh, caterpillar in uh, a jar and, and watch its metamorphosis into a butterfly. And one day he, get, uh, he, he came to his room and he saw that the caterpillar uh, had become like, I mean, encapsulated in, in, in that shell uh, in the pupa. And, and something was trying to come out of that pupa, of that shell. But the hole was very, very small. So the boy uh, stared at it and was waiting. When would the butterfly come out? But uh, it felt like the, the butterfly was wriggling inside that shell, but finding it really hard to come out. So uh, what the boy thought was that uh, maybe I should enlarge that little narrow hole and uh, then the butterfly can come out easily. So with uh, a pair of scissors, very fine scissors, uh, the boy cut the hole. And what happened was that out came a caterpillar with really limpy wings. The wings did not uh, spread out. So uh, the boy was really sad. Why uh, is my caterpillar not becoming a butterfly? Why are the wings not spreading out? And they went to the vet. And the doctor told them that it is the very small hole that pushes the hemolymph, the body fluid of the butterfly, into the veins of the wings and that is what creates uh, this pressure in the wings that they can spread out so uh, you know i was reminded of the, this verse that narrow is the path that leads to life because that butterfly actually lost its chance of living a life as a butterfly 
So, uh, I mean, the Bible clearly tells us that, uh, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm painting a very uh, dark picture of how the times can be, but the Bible is very clear that there are times for everything. Next slide, please. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8, we see that there's a time to be born and time to die, plant and be planted, kill and heal, to break down and to build, cast away and gather stones, embrace and refrain from embracing, seek and lose. And, and there is a time for everything under heaven. God has put a time for everything. So as humans, we walk through all these times, the good times and the bad times. But we have good news. Next slide, please. That whatever the time uh, we have or whatever the times we are sent in, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God is good. Uh, when our heart breaks, God is good. When we don't feel it, God is good. In seasons of waiting, in seasons of sickness and loss, he is good all the time. So uh, this is something that we would only experience when we go through the hard times. Um, it is for us to go through these difficult times that we know that he is good all the times. And that brings me uh, to the next section. Uh, next slide, please. Of how to manage work and life. So uh, all my life I've grown up as, uh, you know, as a professional, as a career person as well, that, you know, we have to find a balance between work and life. And uh, very recently, last year, I was introduced to this concept of work-life integration. You know, uh, the balance that we strive for is actually a myth. It's a, you know, it's actually the fine balance that we look for is not possible. And we, uh, have to learn to integrate work and life and that is how we can really uh, work you know effectively and manage our time because if we want a separate time for work and a separate time for our life sometimes it becomes difficult as uh, life throws out challenges to you it becomes really difficult uh, next slide please so imagine a scenario in which uh, a woman Please don't press next. Please uh, just wait. So uh, imagine that we are uh, having to juggle balls. And that's, I think, what each one of us is doing. We have a ball of work, a ball of health, a ball of spirit, our spiritual life, family life, and friends. And we are juggling them to, to keep, you know, to sustain our life. And uh, so just I would want answers from you. So some of these balls, uh, or maybe all, are made of rubber and some are of glass. What ball do you think are made of ball and what ball do you think are made of glass? I need answers, please. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yep, the answer is coming in the chat. One yeah. of the glass family. Balls. So, Dr. Anita, what do you think? Relationships is made of glass. Uh, Dr. Anita, you think family is made of glass or rubber? Okay, glass, family, friends. Yes, <laughs> Kripa, you've got it. Next, please. Work is the rubber. Everything yes. else is lost. Yes. Uh, can you please press the next on the slide? Yes. It is. Uh, sorry. Uh, back, please. It is the. It is only the work ball that is made of rubber. All other balls are made of glass. So if we drop health or our spiritual life or our family or friends, they are going to be very delicate balls for us to handle for the rest of our lives. They'll have cracks in them. They'll be broken in some way. Uh, but the work would bounce back. It's made of rubber. So uh, not that I'm saying that work is not important, but I'm saying that learn how to prioritize these things as you integrate work and life. So uh, that brings me to the last 
session, the, the last section, sorry, of, um, of my slides. And that is how to manage time and times. Uh, previous, please. Uh, that is entrusted to us, both the, uh, the time that has been given to us and the times we've been sent in. And uh, although these are some practical tips, but I'm telling you, I'm no guru uh, of managing time. Uh, I'm also trying, I struggle, I sometimes fail, uh, but I'm just sharing so that we all learn. Next slide, please. One of the disciplines, the spiritual disciplines I want to share with you for managing time is the importance of seeking God first. Um, and, uh, you know, I always think of it like, for example, you're baking something and you have these stepwise instructions of when to add flour and when to add oil or butter or sugar and then beat them and then add probably chocolate chips. So you don't do the other way around. You don't put the chocolate chips first and then the flour and then the eggs. Um, and then, you know, probably you, you don't do like the eggs in the, uh, in the last. And, and those of us from South Asia, you know, we, uh, when we make curries, uh, the first thing we do is put oil and then we fry whatever is that, mostly onions, but we don't put the uh, ingredient of oil in the last. So um, I always think that, you know, that is how it is important for us to seek God first time in the morning. Whatever is, is your first time you wake up at 5 a.m., it is 4, it is 9, it is 10. So the first person you should listen to and talk to should be God because that is going to make the recipe of your day really beautiful and you're going to come up with all the strength and the wisdom that you need for the rest of the day. Next slide, please. So identifying your chronotype, uh, what are you? you? Are you an owl or are you a lark? That's very important uh, for you to uh, identify. It helps you manage your time uh, wisely because uh, for example, the owls like to stay awake late and uh, they have their creative times late into the to, to the night, uh, which sometimes goes into early morning. Uh, they're very creative. They sometimes like to take risks. Uh, if you are a lark, you are very active early on in the day. That's your best time for you to be, you know, to memorize things. And as the day progresses, your energy level falls. So if you are able in, in a position in life where you can really schedule your day or plan your day. Please identify what you are and harness the, the power of circadian rhythm, uh, whatever is your most powerful time. But again, I would come back to point number one, the tip number one. I think that is the key to having uh, a very blessed day of starting your day whenever you start your day with God. Next slide. Okay, so taking the hardest challenges first, uh, one of the things for managing time wisely is sometimes, you know, you have a challenge and uh, uh, Dr. Anita says that she's a lark. Uh, I'm a lark too. I'm up at three or four. And that is why, um, uh, because, uh, you know, I have to sleep early so that I have my number of hours of sleep that will keep me sane. And, and that is why I'm saying that, you know, it is important. Now, as for the challenges, uh, sometimes, you know, when we have a challenge, um, there's this uh, from this book, um, Eat, my, Eat Your Frog. And, uh, you know, uh, Eat That Frog by uh, Brian Tracy. And it says, if you have to eat a frog, eat it the first thing in the morning. And, and obviously not before you read your Bible and spend your time with God. But... Uh, do it the first thing. Whatever is your challenge, try to do it the first thing in the morning after uh, your prayer time. And he goes on to say, if you have to eat two frogs, eat the biggest one first. So, you know, that also helps us not to uh, put things away that, uh, you know, um, uh, we can do it later or something is challenging. You have to make a decision. You have to do something. Do it uh, as soon as possible. And you wouldn't waste a lot of time uh, fretting about how you would do it. So whatever is your challenge, go for it and do it the first thing in the morning. Uh, next slide, please. So the fourth tip I would say is prioritizing your tasks. 
uh, at this is the time quadrant, I think most of you would be aware of that. So uh, on the horizontal uh, axis, we have urgent and non-urgent. On the vertical axis, we have not important and important. And the first quadrant, the yellow quadrant here, it's also called as uh, uh, the quadrant of urgency. So you have to do these things. It's a crisis. It's a deadline. So don't waste any time and do it. It's like that frog or the bigger frog that you have to eat. And if you look at the uh, red uh, quadrant here, the, the red square indicates something that is important, but it's not urgent. For example, building of relationships, for example, planning your career, if you want to do certain courses and something, it's very important, but it's not that urgent. So this quadrant is called as the quadrant of quality and it uh, requires you to schedule. If we go on to the green uh, square, it is a quadrant of distraction you know it is something that is urgent but it is not important it can be an urgent meeting it can be you're doing something very very uh important and then somebody calls and then it's a call from the boss or a colleague that you cannot miss so uh these are the quad this is uh what the quadrant of distraction is and uh, for this uh, the tip is delegate uh the last quadrant the blue one it is uh, called the quadrant of waste it is it is what most of us waste our time on social media uh, just uh, you know doing trivial activities uh, just calling randomly uh, to people or chit chatting and escape activities you know okay just I, I have been sitting for so long so maybe I could go and take a walk and it's it's not that you actually needed it it's just a distraction and the tip to do it eliminate as much as possible next slide please Mobile, uh, there's a question by Dr. Santosh, mobile and social media is green or blue mobile or social media uh, usage uh, defines if it is green or blue. If you're using it to just uh, spend time, that's blue. If you're using it because uh, probably you have to, uh, these interactions sometimes, then it is in the green sphere. Okay, tracking your daily activities, that's also very important. I've learned it and I tell all my students to do that as well. I keep a diary. This is from my personal uh, experience that I'm sharing it because there were times uh, uh, when uh, you were less into teaching and sometimes more into the management side. So all you do is probably meet people and and just write emails and call and stuff. So when I used to be driving back home, I had this uh, strong like uh, an anxiety feeling that what have I done today because you know um, sometimes we define work by how many hours we have taught or uh, how many hours we've spent in research but when you've just met people and talked to them uh, we don't consider that as uh, work so what I started doing was that I started uh, maintaining a diary and even if I met somebody for five minutes I would jot it down because I mean that's part of my work I'm supposed to do that I'm listening to them I'm supposed to listen to them and, and find solutions for whatever the problem is so I track it down and uh, and it's really a beautiful feeling when the page of my diary finishes and I have to go on to the next page so it means I have done a lot uh, or the things that I have to do I put the to-do list uh, in my daily activities as well and when I cut it uh, you know whatever I've done or tick mark um, uh, the things that I have done it is an amazing feeling uh, uh, and I would recommend try doing it you would enjoy it next slide Uh, it's also very important that you incorporate what relaxes you. You know, sometimes we wake up and we have this laptop with us that we just, oh, we are so busy. So we are at work and we are busy, busy, busy. So we are coming back from work and we're like, oh, I'm so busy. We are at the shopping mall and we think, sorry, I'm busy because, you know, uh, we uh, really need to sometimes, um, you can say, just in prison work in, in some places. Uh, as Dr. Rebecca said, you know, 50 minutes of, uh, uh, you know, work, Dr. Santosh shared it and 10 minutes of relaxation. So in those 50 minutes, do the, the, the maximum work, but in those 10 minutes, do relax. And it can be traveling, it can be exercise, it can be just going shopping or window shopping, listening to music, whatever it is that relaxes you, obviously that is in line um, with you, you know your faith belief 
that God is watching you. So don't get into bad habits. But, uh, you know, it is important that you make conscious effort of incorporating these things into your lifestyle. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, uh, a lot has been talked about uh, procrastination. Uh, the previous slide, seventh, number seven, avoid pro pro procrastination. Okay, so, uh, you know, Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So if you've got something to do, uh, it's better to do it now and it's it's better to just not put it away not like sometimes it's not like a difficult challenge it's just like an easy thing sometimes I feel the youth struggle with this because it's just one email that you have to do it's just one page assignment that you have to do You're like oh I can do it anytime it's not a challenge so it's not that frog example here it is just that whatever is is at hand whatever is you are supposed to do if it is anything just do it and don't look back because you know sometimes like okay um oh you sit down to do it and then you say okay i can do it later so maybe you start spending time on instagram or youtube or anywhere and and before you know it you have wasted a lot of time and uh you know also i want to uh, share with you that like whatever uh, chronotype you are be very careful that uh, sometimes it has happened that you know, after I've had my quiet time with the Lord. And if I have my phone uh, in my hand and I'm just like, by chance, I got a notification that I have a message on Instagram. And then uh, obviously not by chance, by my decision. If I am on Reels, I, before I know it, I would have wasted, wasted a lot of time. So be very careful of not just, uh, you know, remembering this, that um, if you have to eat a frog, eat it the first thing. But also whatever is at hand, it can be the easiest thing to do. And that is why you're putting it away. Please do it. Uh, next slide. Yeah. Learn from your mistakes. Uh, and not only yours, you know, uh, uh, I have made a lot of mistakes as I shared just now that if I have my phone and I got a message and then I just forget whatever I'm supposed to do, literally, you know, it, it just ruins the, the recipe of my day if I do it. And that is why I've learned. So if you have just have a time of reflection uh, after a week, you can have it a fortnightly, you can have it after a month, but it's better to give yourself some time because if you do it every day sometimes it can become discouraging when uh, in a couple of days like one two or three days uh, in a row you're making the same mistake so give yourself some space um, and by doing that you would you know have this chance of again coming back so I've purposely put the date here 17th uh, uh, of November so you know you just think about it that what was it that I did uh, yesterday or I did today that I should not have done and then what are the difficulties that I faced in achieving my uh, objectives or the tasks that I was supposed to do uh, next slide yeah um, you know there's this famous quote by uh, Warren Buffet that says that you know learn from other people's uh, mistakes. It's better to learn from their mistakes rather than their successes. And also Jack Ma said the same thing uh, that, you know, it is, it is uh, the mistakes of other people are such good teachers and, and also of ours as well. But, you know, sometimes we, we can learn from other people and, and not just rely on what their success story is. And uh, in the end, I would say, you know, it can be our prayer to God, uh, what psalm is put in psalm 90 so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom we need a heart of wisdom and it's only god that who can do that uh, we can try all these tips i gave you the disclaimer i am also learning i struggle i fail and it's only god who can help us to manage our time wisely because he has given it as a gift he's given it as a resource he's given it as an opportunity and he's given it as a bailment. So uh, it, it, it's through him that you can do it. Um, and that brings me to the end of my slides. Thank you. And I thought that, next slide, please. I thought that there are people from all over the world. So oh, in whatever language you understand, thank you.
I think that's like, yeah. So there would be many ways of saying thank you that I can't even pronounce, but my heart felt thank you to you. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for the insightful talk. Indeed, time is a precious um, treasure and uh, managing it efficiently is the key to success. So we are really thankful to you, ma'am, for your time. So yes, that's all. Uh, thank you once again, Dr. Iram, for your time. My and pleasure. Now, uh, over to Maven. Thank you. Uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Iram, for that wonderful session. And uh, mm -hmm. finally, we will. Uh, I will give a small uh, introduction to what ICMDA is about. So let me just share the screen. Um, let me just start with uh, what ICMDA is all about. So. The International Christian Medical and Dental Association, uh, which, are, which is formed by Christian medical uh, organizations all over the world, including uh, EMFI, uh, CMAI India, MC, S, MCMDA Nepal, HCF in Sri Lanka, etc. Uh, there are so many uh, organizations out there globally uh, and over 110 plus countries, uh, which are part and part of this uh, major global community. So let's just talk about uh, the vision that ICMDA has, uh, the global vision. Uh, so its vision is to have a Christian witness in every community and every nation. And uh, its mission uh, is to strengthen the national uh, Christian medical and dental movements through four, uh, four aspects. And that is uh, through the calling, uh, you know, uh, to 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 strengthen the calling of medical doctors and uh, dentists all over the world, uh, and then equipping and training and building uh, Christian the understanding of Christian doctors and dentists and students for leadership, and through fellowship by bringing together members from all over the world uh, at during the con main conferences, uh, and also through service, uh, initiating and strengthening the mission. Uh, and especially into the vulnerable communities through partnership among national movements. So the these are the member. Uh, it, there are fourteen regions. Uh, ICMD has fourteen global regions. As you can see, there are four. The fourteen regions are mentioned uh, on the left side uh, of your screen. And uh, so today's uh, webinar is hosted by the South Asian region. So as you can see the arrow pointed in that direction. And uh, so there are uh, webinars that are being uh, conducted by uh, the other uh, regional, you know, the region, uh, you know, uh, by the other regional heads also. But today's uh, webinar is hosted by South Asia. And our purpose is to build uh, the influence uh, of Christ in the medical uh, feel um, especially in the south asian region but today's webinar we have had participants from all over the uh, world and uh, therefore we are uh, we we consider it a privilege to have uh, through this webinar so many people we believe so many people have uh, been impacted uh, through this uh, during this uh, one and a half hour session so yeah so we have similar webinars every other month. And in the past, we have had webinars on career choices and choosing a life partner, etc. And if you want to listen uh, to these webinars, uh, please do let us know and we can share the links. And uh, two, uh, there are two ways in which you can keep up with the trends uh, within ICMDA. One is through the weekly webinars every Thursday on various issues relating to health, uh, healthcare. In case you would like to access the previous webinars, you can find them on YouTube. So uh, you just need to go on YouTube and type ICMDA and you will be able to access all these uh, links which you can see on the slide and much more. And uh, they are very uh, valuable sessions on various topics and I'm sure all of you would benefit and gain much uh, by accessing uh, ICMDA's YouTube channel. 
finally uh, you can join us in the various online trading programs and as you can see the topics are there on your uh, on your right right hand side these are the uh, different topics which are currently available uh, each of the training programs extends from 12 to 14 weeks it varies on a weekly basis and if you would like uh, to know more about these webinars you can uh, if you can see the number which has been uh, inserted on the right bottom right hand corner of the slide you can whatsapp that number and uh, you can uh, ask you can uh, you can contact the number and uh, you can get more information regarding these webinars uh, yeah so with that uh, i think uh, that is uh, those were the slides that we had for today's the introduction, uh, basic introduction to ICMDA and the programs that we have. And uh, please do keep in touch uh, with that WhatsApp number or with any one of us on one of any one of the WhatsApp groups. Uh, so yeah, uh, over to you, Shifa. Yes, uh, thank you, Maven. Um, so yes, um... I want to thank each one of you. I want to thank all of you for uh, joining today's uh, webinar on learning to learn well and uh, managing your time wisely. I hope you all had a great time and I really hope that you found these insights uh, valuable and um, uh, you know you would be feeling encouraging, you, you would be feeling um, encouraging to implement these uh, strategies in your daily lives as well. So yes, I hope we all are blessed to be here. Uh, so yes, let's uh, just close this session. And to close uh, this uh, session, I would like uh, uh, Miss Rebecca Zakaria to uh, lead us in prayer. Shall we pray together? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to join together in this virtual room um, from so many different parts of the world. And we know and believe that it is only because of you uh, and because of your love for us that we are here together. We thank you, Lord, for every dear brother and sister in Christ who has joined us today, for those who had planned to join but were unable to join. We thank you for the technology that has supported us um, to be able to do this uh, seminar together. And Lord, we thank you for the many uh, discussions, interactions uh, that we've heard from one another, Lord. Father, we know that um, our lives are built on you. We want to live our lives with purpose and meaning and ultimately want to glorify you in all that we do, whether it's at home or at work, uh, uh, whether it's in um, raising our children or in studying um, or in um, helping others in our community, whatever it is, Lord, we want uh, Jesus to be at center stage. And so, Lord, as we have looked at um, these two topics today, we pray that you will enable us to take this and use it well and to be able to use our time well, to be able to um, show your love through what you have called us to do. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless the work of ICMDA. Thank you, Lord, for... Um, their presence, they are your hands and feet all across the globe. And we pray that you will bless each of the regional teams, each of the coordinators um, who are so involved. And we pray especially for the uh, young doctors and dentists who are uh, so fervent to serve you in their respective countries and communities. And we pray that you will continue to bless them, Lord. Thank you once again for this time together. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>